Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk about cardiogenic syncope. Um, when a patient comes in with a chief complaint of passing out or syncope, um, there's a couple of different types of syncope that you want to think about. One of them is neurogenic, so anything in the CNS, seizures, um, MS, all those can cause syncope. And then there is the vasovagal, obviously, and then there are cardiogenic causes of syncope. And these usually manifest as EKG changes. So I just wanted to go over those changes with you today. Hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is a condition in which the portion of the heart becomes thickened without an obvious cause. It's usually genetic in nature and results in the heart being less able to pump blood effectively. Symptoms can vary from just feeling fatigued to leg swelling or shortness of breath, and sometimes these patients can have sudden collapse on a soccer field. Um, and the Typical test question, it is a young child who has a sudden cardiac arrest in the soccer field. What you want to look out for are some of the EKG changes of HOCAM. Um, LVH is a big one, sometimes even causing um, left atrial um, enlargement. And then you will have these dagger-like Q waves in the lateral leagues. And sometimes this structural abnormality can cause arrhythmias like Wolf Parkinson White or VTAC. So we can see those dagger-like Q waves with the arrows here. Um, you can also see left ventricular hypertrophy with this very long Q or S. So this is very concerning for HOCAM. So Brugada syndrome is a genetic mutation of the sodium channel blockers in the heart. Um, specifically, this disorder can lead to irregular heartbeats in the heart's lower chamber, which is called ventricular arrhythmias. If untreated, the irregular heartbeats can cause fainting, seizures, or difficulty breathing, and a lot of times this happens at night. Some of the EKG findings of Brugada syndrome include a right bundle branch block or incomplete right bundle branch block, and then an ST segment that is saddled or has a ski slope appearance in V1 through V3. And I like to think of that as Brugada is burr, cold, so you're going downhill and you're skiing down this slope. So let's look at that. So here you can see a beautiful right bundle of lynch block in V1 with the bunny ears and in V6 with the large QRS and then um, depressed ST segment thereafter. Um, and then in V1, look at the bunny ears. In the second bunny ear, you can see this downward sloping or saddle shaped um, formation and then followed by the negatively inverted T wave. And this is Brugada syndrome. Wolf-Parkinson-White is a syndrome in which an electrical uh, pathway is between the atrium and the ventricle that is present at birth. And this electrical pathway um, can cause some very odd arrhythmias and is usually characterized by EKG findings of the delta wave, um, which interrupts and makes a shorter PR interval and then a widened QRS thereafter. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see here, this is a little bit of a tacky dysrhythmia, which is common with Wolf Parkinson White. And then you can see the very short PR interval, um, almost to which the QRS is starting right after the P wave is done. And then you have that upstroking of the QRS thereafter. Um, and then that QRS is a little bit widened too. So this is Wolf Parkinson White. Arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy is a clinical entity characterized by ventricular arrhythmias and ventricular pathology consistent with right ventricular dilation, RV dysfunction, or any RV wall motion abnormality, and it usually manifests in some EKG changes consistent with an epsilon wave, um, T wave inversions, and then a slow upstroke of the S wave. So as you can see here, there are epsilon waves and then vero leads, and this is that little notching after the QRS and then vero leads. And then you have T wave inversions in V1 through th V3, and then you can see some S upstroke um, that is prolonged in some cases. So let's take a closer look at the epsilon wave. So like I said before, that little notching after the QRS you can see is the epsilon wave and then you can have the prolonged slurred upstroke of the S wave occasionally. So that is AVRD. 
QT prolongation is a measure of the delayed ventricular repolarization, which means the heart muscle takes longer than normal to recharge between beats. Um, there are many different causes of QT prolongation, a lot of electrolyte causes, um, heart attacks, increased intracranial pressure. Uh, this can be congenital in nature, and then a lot of medications and drugs can cause a prolonged QT. Some of the common ones are Benadryl, so antihistamines, um, anti-nausea medicines like Zofran, um, anticholinergics, antiarrhythmics, um, and then a lot of TCAs cause um, prolonged QTs as well. So let's take a look at that. So seen here is prolonged QT, and uh, sometimes it's very hard to just recognize it by looking, so I like to go up to the top part of the EKG and get the correct measurement of the QT, and my ballpark number is greater than 500 milliseconds. There are some discrepancies between males and females, but I use 500 milliseconds, and if it's longer than that, then it's prolonged QT, and sometimes you're going to want to adjust this to the heart rate, so sometimes your QT becomes shorter and longer um, based on your heart rate. So you just want to want to measure that. And there is an awesome MD calc um, equation that you can fill in the heart rate and the QT and get the QT adjusted um, measurement thereafter. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, just remember, there are cardiogenic causes of syncope, and I like to specifically look for all of these causes on the EKG because sometimes they can be very subtle and don't always have everything that we talked about, or they might have one specific finding in the EKG, and you might just overlook it if you're just looking for ST elevations at that time. Um, so that's it. See you next Wednesday, guys. Mm -hmm.